what is the most gruesome video that you can remember that you were like, no way we're going to play that? I think the nastiest videos is anything with throw up or shit. (laughs) There's just cultural differences, and I have to be okay with knowing that I'm on a white show. It's hilarious. I'm pretty sure our videos are 97% white people. (laughs) I think the other three is just spread out amongst everybody else. We figure it out. But for the most part, I watch stuff and I'm just like, yo. I would never out <laughs> drawing dicks on people's heads. Just always stuff. I'm just like, I don't be getting half this stuff. Yeah. Imagine you woke up like for real, and one of your friends really put a big dick on your head. You'd be like, Yo, we gotta fight, fam. No, he got the die. Yeah, he got the die. <laughs> I was just saying, <laughs> die. I'm glad I got him. And what you, <laughs> what you die on? You ask a nigga when you wake dead. up. Why you ever died before, my dog? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, we got Stilo Brim in the studio with us, guys. We're going to talk branching out. Uh, yeah. That's what we're going to theme this out to be. I like that. You weren't on TV prior to Ridiculousness. True or false? That is true somewhat. It's yeah, true. Can you share your story of how that came to be? Uh, I was doing music. I was doing A&R work and management work in music. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was Rob's cousin, Drama, wanted to do a publishing production company at the time. I was helping him put together his publishing production company, uh, recruiting all the songwriters, producers, everything like that. And uh, the studio was at the Fantasy Factory, mm. so which was Rob's full thing he had downtown. And uh, I met, well, Rob came to like maybe like two sessions and was just like, yo, you funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> you funny. It. And I was like, oh, word. And then he came to me maybe the third session. He was like, can I talk to you? And he was just like, hey, man, I got a show that I'm, I'm already doing. I got picked up. I would love to have you come, you know, shoot the pilot with us and, and potentially do the show. And I was like, all right. I thought he was just bullshitting because right. it's Hollywood. Right, you, you know what I'm saying? I think he Barnell Hill in me, if anything. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, cool. That sounds cool. And uh, I didn't know him. Didn't have his number, nothing like that. He called me three months later. I didn't even believe it was actually him because he hadn't mentioned anything else to me. He hadn't, like, mm. came back in the studio and was like, hey, we still doing that? Mm. Nothing. Three months. And then he just called me and was like, hey, this is Rob. Can you be at the studio tomorrow at 10 a.m.? filming that pilot and I was like oh okay well cool thank you for telling me and I pulled up and we shot the pilot straight yeah. up yeah that was that's the fruit. were you scared story. like of course you... I was horrible yeah. the pilot I was god awful <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> uh, I was scared because like it was it was I was afraid but I also was just afraid of messing up a full production you know what I'm saying like you, like, get, you didn't want it all to be on you yeah I'm the only black dude number there we one. go there we go yeah so secondly it's it's not even just me Rob and Chanel in the pilot it's me Rob Chanel and drama which is Rob's cousin so to me there was an order of speaking pecking order yeah. yeah it was all Rob then drama then maybe Chanel and then there's anything else left to point out on the video maybe you can jump in so like I didn't think I had like that much room to perform strong as well. But I also was just like, I don't know. They might not yeah, use me cool. And uh, Rob ended up hitting me again, which was like, hey, man, MCB hated you. Uh, I told them that, <laughs> that you were amazing, though, and that, trust me, I'll, I'll get you more comfortable. And, and we did the show, yeah. So I've been doing so the episode. Just, so he just felt like, you know Didn't what? Didn't know a whole wall ain't nothing but God. If if, if you ask me, what the fuck did you me? do? Like, were you telling but jokes in the I mean, so I probably was just been sitting here laughing at this motherfucker the whole true. time. True, I've been laughing at him since he was trying to do windmills I in can, the fucking field house. That's true, but I can rem- I can all you know I can you tie that back to one, real life uh, you know yeah. experiences and shit because we know him. But Rob didn't know him from a can of paint, so it's like. Like, what did you do in those yeah, sessions? I don't, story, I don't right? remember. Uh, <laughs> I, let me just start with that. I don't remember because it's not like, oh, you know before somebody comes in the room that you're performing for this person in your head. Mm. I'm not here to be on TV, so I don't even care mm. about him being there. So I'm just being myself, just probably talking shit. And tell him younger me, way more unpolished, yeah. probably just talking wild and being funny, <laughs> <course>. though. <clears throat> Where he was just like, it's you no, know, you stand there. And that wasn't, I want to act like... Um, it wasn't still guy, and for him to even notice that about me mm-hmm. wasn't uh, 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 incredible. But that wasn't my first, necessarily my first time hearing people be like, "Hey, you should be you on should be TV, TV, man. Yeah. You should, like, got a personality. Hey, you're really funny. Hey, you this." I just didn't, you know. I just didn't want to dive too deep right. in that. I so never he saw just that sort of like myself. gave you like this joke. Yeah, and then, and that was just like, all right, it's just an alley oop. Like, what you want me to do? I, I'm gonna have to dunk this motherfucker. It's right, right it's right here. Yeah. So uh, started doing that. And I felt like nothing else. It was me walking in my purpose 
and that was in, in doing music at the time, and that's what got me to this other you know track that was also still in my purpose, right. and got to do that. And uh, yeah, I mean, we on you know, season twenty seven right now. Yeah, right. Right. They don't want to stop it. Hey man, who was your uh, your mentors or people surrounding you that encouraged you to take that leap? My parents obviously were that for me because they made us know that at an early age of like, yo, just because we from a neighborhood don't mean we have to be of a neighborhood. Like, mm -hmm. just because we live in circumstances and different things don't mean you have to allow that to be you and to, to define who you are. So I think early on, I knew that, and it probably was overconfident, if anything, mm -hmm. and, and set myself off. But yeah, after that, when I was, it was after my freshman year, high, uh, freshman year of college. Uh, I was on a full ride, so my parents and stuff weren't encouraging me to just leave and go to... LA and you know my family wasn't being like this is smart and you know half the time you know you look at things in, in different life nobody's gonna believe it's smart or believe this is the right call for you you got to believe that's the right call for you mm -hmm. uh of course they all encouraged me as I made that call after I made the call yeah. they all encouraged me in everything I did you know what I'm saying it just it wasn't what they wanted at that at that time right mm. that's interesting real talk and it's not surprising either just because You've always been, let's say, like uh, you know, like an enterpriser. Like man, everything you were into was always big. I always was a, a big thinker and a big dreamer. I talk about this. I used to work at GCI, and uh, I was talking to Leon Rogers, who works up there recently. He was like, "Man, how'd you know you was uh, you know, gonna get out to LA and make?" It? I think I didn't. Nigga. I, was just, I was just talking shit to y'all. I, I, I was like, I just knew I didn't want to be they there. I knew I wasn't comfortable. Yeah. I knew I wasn't content. I knew I looked around and was like, yo, there's more out there. And I knew that, like, you know, not saying that you have to leave whatever city you're from to, to, you know, get to those dreams. You don't. But for me, I knew that, you know, the dream I had and the things that I wanted to do were, you know, in my eyes, tangible. I've always looked at the biggest shit is still tangible. Mm -hmm. And be like, you could get that if you just look at the, the, I right. feel like we, the, you know, we've been put on this earth as, as as men and just people in general to do nothing but problem solve. Each day I wake up, I just look, I look at problems. If it's problems for myself, even like problems in my life or with holes I want to fill and say, okay, well, how do I simply fill these holes? What, mm -hmm. how, what What's on the other side of that wall? What do I have to do? Is there a resource I already currently have? Is it, I ask myself all these questions to solve those problems. Exactly. Yeah. I took on other people's problems to help me. Yeah. So it was like I could be in a game, be dead exhausted and say, oh, no, I got to go. Like, bro got, a, bro got a son. Yeah. <laughs> Just say you gonna help him. It ain't about that. <laughs> no, but about, show that it's about going. <laughs> but show that. But it was to, it was to be times like that where it's like nigga, I don't even get to see my nephew or my yeah. I don't get to see my little cousins grow up. I ain't seen them. I seen them one time. He walking around, got a whole hands across the street. Next time I see him, the man got a deep voice and he got Facts. dreads, <laughs> and he look at me in my eye, and it's like. In the moments of being tired of doing whatever, it's like this is what you chose to do. Like it's like a reminder right. to yourself that shit is real. Like this is the time that it takes to yeah. get there. Like you can see it on your little cousin. You can see it on your nephew. This is how much time it takes to get to where you want to go, and how much work and sacrifice it takes. Because you don't know this little nigga. Yeah, and 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 that's and that's something that I even talk to myself about. I deal with, and I'd be like, man, you know, you can't that time, you know, that, that you mm -hmm. miss out on. When people talk about sacrifice, you like, yo, that, that those are huge sacrifices. Like, Real talk. I get sad seeing my niece, uh, uh, my niece, Real seventeen talk. years old now. See my little nephews, and I see them every, you know, I'll see them in a year, see them two or three times and in a year, big. but then I don't see them again. Every time I see them, they having growth spurts, they getting bigger and bigger, and you like, man, it's a lot of that sacrifice. At least you better have some kind of return. Real talk. No, no, Richard. No, no, Richard. Show for that. Real I, talk. I, I, I talked to my dad about this. My dad, he invests so much in community and, and baseball and all these different things in the youth. But I'll tell him, I'll be like, yo, I'm okay with you investing this stuff. Just make sure you're getting, you're getting return because if you're going to, let's just say, forfeit some quote-unquote family time, let's say hypothetically, yeah. then you need to have a return enough that your family can benefit from some, like if, if nothing else, if I'm going to miss out on my family time, I miss out on different things, I better have some return that my family can at least benefit from the lack of me. Real talk. That's from how I look at it. Man, and that works in every way. Yeah. Real. Facts. Real talk. That applies. Let's you was touching on missing out on cousins and I know all of they little ass probably watch ridiculousness. Yeah. 
what's their biggest like what do they really like all the time got to know when they see you what what about that show is it for them what's their conversation i don't even uh like most of my immediate family that i've taken it to see the show yeah. when they come in town whatever like they can go see my cousins that they come and see the show um my other little cousins and stuff i just be telling them like I don't really know y'all little niggas. Like, really. <laughs> <laughs> you pick up on some of the most <laughs> random stuff. Had to. I don't. But I'm saying after watching a video of some of this stuff, yeah. seeing somebody get hurt falling off of the, the Zoom skateboard. Man be funny. Yeah, yeah, what? <laughs> how, do, how are you processing that that fast? Or are you guys seeing these videos prior? No, so it, it, it <clears throat> it's interesting. So early on, the first season, we didn't even get to see the videos at all. And I was telling Rob, like, yo, I think we should possibly watch the videos beforehand just because, like, I don't think ESPN is being like, back, back, back. <laughs> yeah, it actually went over. Yeah, it went over the fence. Like, I think niggas know whether right. it's going to be a home run or right. not. So I was like, nothing else. We should just, like, look at it for a few. He was like, no, it's going to mess with the organicness. And we end up, um, I asked him, can I get the videos? One day I came in, and after that, I got the videos. and Boom, bop, 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 bop. Joke, 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 joke. Funny, 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 funny. He came to me afterwards and was like, what the fuck? He was like, they gave you the video. So he was like, you were killing me. Out there. Uh, he was like, that That was, that was, okay, from here on out, I guess we'll watch the video. So I'll say for the first, the like, first season to like seven, we watched the videos. Uh -huh. And then we just got so loose and like became just, so the camaraderie just became so strong. The chemistry yeah. became so strong that it was like, we don't need the videos no more. Let's just go out there, know the heartbeat yeah, itself. and just film it. And <clears throat> I had to early on find stuff in the back because they were editing me out so much. Mm. If they came to live tapings, I might say a whole bunch of jokes. I also knew they Rob and Chanel had been on TV already, mm -hmm. and I'm the only black guy, and I'm a new right, black guy. They right. got a you know how hard it is to break a new black guy. <laughs> That's just what it is. <laughs> like trust us. <laughs> <laughs> in TV. They didn't even at first. <laughs> they were like, no, we didn't believe it either, America. <laughs> but so er, early on, like I had to start finding these like things in the back to trick the editors to keeping me in. Wow. Like if I had these big moments, I was like, all right, well then I'm gonna just start finding stuff that I know y'all. If y'all cut me out of that, y'all just yeah. they just hate me. Real talk. <laughs> I know that y'all may don't care about me, but this means y'all hate me if y'all take talk. me. Out. So then that started to work out for us a whole bunch. And then as years went on, I just knew people were looking for me to, to find, find things as well. Things, yeah. So then I just started looking for stuff as we'd be doing it. Dog, that, that shit is yeah. unbelievable. You really found a yeah. niche it was, I think the first big one was somebody was getting kidnapped in the back. And everybody went crazy about that one. It was like this full-on cheer thing going on. And, and they were like, this girl failed. That was one thing. Cool. That's what we were supposed to be watching. But in the back, a whole man came in and just dragged this girl off camera. And I was like, there's somebody getting kidnapped in the back. <laughs> and the fans was like, what the hell? And that was, I think, one of our first times we actually zoomed, zoomed in, in like and, and like... Panned it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. It was like, hey, this is something we want to point out to you guys. And then from there, we started using that a whole bunch too. That <laughs> shit is crazy. Yeah. It'd so be y'all might have really been part of it. We might have really been a part of it. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you this much. We could do a whole nother show, a spinoff that's just about criminal videos. Yeah. I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> I watch videos and I'm like, there's no way these people are not dead. There's no way. This is not a murder. This is <laughs> They'll tell us no. We know for a fact that we bring these videos on. That's not Nobody the case. Nobody died, yeah. But I think they just tell us that. <laughs> I think it just makes them sleep at night. Right, right. Yeah, right. some of that shit is bad. I ain't gonna lie. Some of that. Sh this is one of the questions I had yeah. on here was, what is the most gruesome video that you can remember that you were like, no way we're gonna play that. We oh, and it's like this is hard for me to watch. I think the nastiest videos is anything with throw up or shit. <laughs> there, there, there's just cultural differences, and I have to be okay with knowing that I'm on a they white think show. It's and hilarious. I'm cool with it, but I also. No, yeah. that if you really want to go into ridiculousness, and I'm making this up right now, I'm making this up, but I think I believe it's true. Uh, if you want to go in and pull our stats, I'm pretty sure our videos are 97% white people. <laughs> I think the other three is just spread out amongst everybody else. We figure it out, but for the most part, I watch stuff and I'm just like, yo, I would never out drawing dicks on people's heads. Just always stuff. I'm just like, I don't be getting half this stuff. Yeah, but I'm uh, cool with it. Some of the categories, yeah. Some of the categories are crazy. Yeah. Imagine you woke up like for real, and one of your friends really put a big dick on your head. You'd be like, yo, we got to fight for him. 
No, he got the die. Yeah, he got the die. <laughs> I was just saying that. Die. Die. I'm glad I got him. Hey, what, you, what you die on? <laughs> they see you up here. What you die on? I drew a dick. <laughs> you, got, nigga. you ask a nigga when you wake dick. up. Like, you ever die? died before, my dog? <laughs> 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 you ever died before, bro? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> wine and weed. Let's dive into it. Yeah. How did that start? Where did that come about? Why wine and weed? Thank you uh, for coming on the show, too. You I know, appreciate you. You know, yeah. you know, got glossed over there, man. Had us a, <laughs> had us a drunken <laughs> conversation. Yeah, it was a good convo. Word. I um started wine and weed just because uh, my my friend, my co-host Chris Reinecker, had asked me for like three years straight, getting get a podcast with me, do a podcast with me, mm-hmm. and I was like, bro, I'm not trying to do no podcast. Like I'm chilling. And then uh, Joe Rogan's uh, 100 million dollar deal came out. And I was like, podcast All right. <laughs> ain't that bad of a thing. <laughs> when you be looking at it like that, you just wasn't telling it to me like that. You wasn't explaining right, it I correct. See it. Real talk. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't see it. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, cool. Um, because you know, I'm a, I, I believe I'm a decent conversationalist. We were just having these different convos amongst a black dude and a white dude that I felt like would have been super healthy for America to have. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm just saying, like, well, that's that's Real most time. stuff. It's the it's the fear of actually being similar. It's the fear of like having conversations and realizing I like that. that they're oh this oh we're so much alike. So like mm-hmm. for us as we're writing out these crazy sketches, we're getting into these real convos. And I was just like, man, this you know it would be cool for us to do this. So we're able to kind of have real conversations about heavy heavy topics, things, yeah. yeah, heavy topics. And we'll break down the our, our only thing is we break down the news of the week. And the news is heavy enough. Mm-hmm. That we have to get into conversations about why this rule or why does this law, you know, protect this person versus this person, or blah blah blah, or homophobia mm-hmm. in the black community, or blah, blah blah. Like we'll get into these real convos on the show, and uh, I think that those uh, we call them social lubricants uh, through wine and weed just make it easier for people to like understand. We just regular people too. I love that social yeah. lubricants. Stay safe. Stay safe. Right. Developing your voice and being a brand. Like, we wanted to talk about that. Like, how did you implement your brand and, like, you know, like, over over podcasts and, like, you know, just over digital? How did you, you know, expand yourself? Yeah, I think, I mean, each day I'm still expanding myself. But I think, like, of course it sounds cliche, but we all are brands. We all got our own brand every day, you know, if you own... Instagram, if you on social, anything like you, you got, you got your own brand. Like you're, you're, you're putting out content each day. You're selling something, mm-hmm. you know, to people. So for me, uh, and podcasting, and, and you know, for a long time, I just didn't want to do. Uh, I was just being too particular about what I wanted to do after ridiculousness because I knew that wasn't my mm-hmm. true voice. Mm-hmm. So I was like, whatever you do next has to be something that you believe in and your voice because what you can't do is go from a show that's, you know, it's funny, it's good, but it's not my voice to another show and, you know, MTV and they offer a million shows. Come do this, come do that. You're like, I don't want to do nothing that ain't me if I have that liberty, you know what I'm saying, that freedom to move around. I don't want to be doing nothing that ain't ain't me. Um, So doing wine and weed, I just knew that I could get out my sort of real voice, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh... I always joke about this, but even during um, Barack and, and, you know, just as, as more recent times uh, call for you to be more vocal and, and really say what side of history you land on, um, I would have a whole bunch of uh, um, white people in middle America write me and be like, I thought you were different. And you'd be like, damn, ridiculousness. Right. All I do is do videos on this show. And it makes it where you, you. <laughs> they get mad at me like, we trusted this. Into our homes, America. And look how he turned his back on us. Be like, what the fuck? <laughs> all I said was, was, with y'all in the all I said was, all I did was tweeted equality. How did you know? It'd be like that. Uh, It'd be but like yeah, that. for me, it was like making sure that I could really be who I was and say the things I wanted to say. And uh, I thought it was a, a, a great formula of, you know, if I was going to be able to talk this pro-black stuff and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Still have my wife right there that's like, this is my dog right here. Like, it don't mean me right. being pro-anything does not mean anti-anything else. Me being yeah. pro-black don't mean I'm an, an, what? He's right. my friend. What you right. talking about, fam? So for me, I felt like it was a, a, a good way for me to do that yeah. and, and grow my, my brain. And that's dope. I like that, that y'all knock yourself off the pedestal, so to speak. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck the politically correct 
way to do it because I feel like, especially in today's age, a lot of people don't retain information in that old fashioned way. Like nobody's picking up a newspaper, fam. Mods is gonna get their information off Instagram, mm-hmm. and then where can they trust somebody to lead that conversation? Mm-hmm. We need a, that's the only reason I'm down to do the podcast because it's like I feel like I walk that line pretty. There's like this, uh, <clears throat> like this grown man, politically correct way to move that's expected of you, and then it's like the veer off because this is what I want to do. Well, but that's that's what's sad though about you know you say it's this piece like oh this thing so PC it's like who determined correctness. Who determined, you know what I'm saying? Like, for a lot of this stuff, like, it's, yeah, I, I look at it the same way. Yeah. I was even going to say switching up your hairstyles and all that shit might be, like you said, first impressions. Mm-hmm. That's also something that, like, we've had, black people, we've had to deal with that or think about that in terms of first impressions and everything else because somebody else chose what correctness looks like. Mm-hmm. Somebody else said what makes them comfortable or this makes me comfortable instead of us being open and listening and understanding that we all got different ways and guess what? Maybe... There's comfort in just listening to motherfuckers. Did you Not- see that that video of the uh, the girl getting her bees taken off? Nah. So that she could run, she I guess she was running. Y'all see that? Oh, oh. she was yeah, supposed to yeah, be yeah. running an event, and her whole team had to run over there and snatch her beads off because they wasn't gonna let her run because she had bees. What was the rule? Like what was? You can read right here. Oh. No <laughs> beads. <laughs> like, why got the boys with them? <laughs> but that was the argument. <laughs> that was the argument. Why should she have to think about that? Like whatever her expression is of her hair, like you get what I'm saying. Like yeah. why does she have to think of that? Why does she have to be shamed of going over there and all that shit? I'm with you though. It's like when you go to a certain place though, and they be like, "Hey." No Tims. He be like, nigga, who, who had Tims? <laughs> Other than black people. <laughs> you ain't Might never seen when your white homie pull up with those six inches on. Like, Real that's talk. the wheat. Real talk. <laughs> that's, that's roll. Real talk. They do that though. A lot of times. And it's it's uh Just talk to me. Yeah, it's a, just I it like to that me. like saying that there's it's cool to have not only just a white perspective, but a white perspective that's not sensitive. Yeah. Like, you got to have that because it's sometimes it's like the, you don't want to be the black guy that comes off like overly aggressive and shit. Yeah. Like, that's why I love being around Danny because Danny, like, she does that too. Uh, on Dance with the Stars, I have my partner. She, yeah. She loves the whole, like, oh, big black dude, everybody's scared. Like, she be like, nobody gives a fuck. Like, fuck you, boy. Like, <laughs> fuck him. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you boy, get out. Like, <laughs> but people will be funny. nervous just because, but she breaks that, that little, uh, uh, it's like a nice little icebreaker for everybody yeah. in the room. Like, bro, I don't care if he sits there looking me. You can tell him what he needs to do and he'll be there on time. Like, yeah. he's messing with you. But without those cues and, you know what I'm saying, uh, and having those conversations, None of this stuff gets talked about. Like we'll we'll go away from that. I would like to know what a white dude felt about yeah. them bees coming off and how embarrassing that is. Like, bro, I never, I've never heard what a white like. I've heard with the black household when we sit down and we eating dinner and we sitting there talking about this shit, smacking our teeth. Man, look at this shit, man. Man, if they did that to me, that's our conversation sitting at the table. And then your mama got to come. Y'all calm down because this the rule and y'all should have read the rules. And then somebody yeah. got to come. Why was that the rule? I've seen that. Yeah. What do the white kids say? Or do they even talk about this? Like, They're I not talking about this. Yeah, that's, this ain't even on the radar. I- no, this ain't. So your wife ran to get on the show and lie, or he? No, just no, 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 no. He's no, no, not no. saying him. He's saying basically his. Friend. Oh, that's what I'm saying. He, he, I'm saying my friend. No, he. No, he, he culture. He know. No, no, he not. He purely white. <laughs> I no, I'm him. saying, but he's culture. Like no, he's but he said they really wouldn't before. talk about like, that. Yeah, like he. No, he. If if he didn't know me, he wouldn't talk about that. <laughs> Uh, no, well, I'm just, I'm just no, saying. No, that's real. That's like, real. Those conversations but that's the, that's the sometimes conversation. Sometimes have to be broken for people to have conversations. Okay. Somewhere else. That's the whole point of us doing the show is to be like, the convo here doesn't necessarily matter. The conversation we're starting out there does. Like, if we can have other people have a conversation and be like, oh, well, I disagree with him. And I do struggle at times not being an aggressive black dude. Yeah. I, do. I struggle at times because... Sometimes things come across gaslighting. Yeah. Uh, because we understand the history mm-hmm. of what is happening. There's actually so happened. much pain behind So it. when people would try to hit you with, but what does that mean? But that's not <laughs> how it works. 
Well, how will we pay back everybody? Yo, yeah. <laughs> you're like, man, get the fuck out my face. Yeah. Man, I'm not playing this game with you. <laughs> Even though, because you see both his face, but it's just like, no, bro, it's unfair. Just say it's unfair and agree with me. <laughs> well, it's just like, as, as problem solvers, you would think that humanity would kick in and make those people want to also solve problems. But I know it's also hard to be like, yo... Y'all the uh y'all the, fault, y'all the 68 uh Celtics. Do I've y'all want to I've right. never faulted the 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 competition of man. Like, you always say this. I don't mm-hmm. it's not a competition yeah, not of a, it man. It is a fucking competition. Look, like if I if I don't get nothing off in this podcast, oh dog, my god. It's always a competition. This is why people will always look at white men and feel like, oh, I don't see what how much more money can it? no, it ain't no money. It don't give a fuck about the money competition it's the competition how consistent can i be it's the competition of how much can i earn it's the okay. competition how much do i have in me oh i see people around me that don't got it so i earned this for me so now i gotta earn this for them since they couldn't do it okay i'm cool with all of that right right it's, but it's, i'm saying i'm just saying i've never been like when you say like i can't get mad at the man that got ideas for technology that no. can make things easier for people and it's unaffordable for a certain class of people. I can't get mad at him for those ideas being in his head to create something crazy over here or uh, taking his money and putting it toward his dream. Yeah, but you're going and, far in the future, right? You're going really far. You're going really, really far. Not, not, not saying, I'm saying that. This is I know now. We talk about the man. The man usually owns a company yeah. that your daddy worked for. Wait. But and he got his foot on your again, daddy's neck. You're Correct. going, you're going, you're going again in the future. Because Why you have to start, if you're saying this is competition, then you have to have a clear perspective and then say, okay, well, then you still cheated to win a competition. Mm. You cheated. So then it's not a fair yeah, competition so it's not fair. anymore. That's, that's really Listen, the argument. I'm telling if you. If I stole land and going people into basketball, I to make knew. sure that I expect the process of yeah. being a richer country. That's why we were the, the youngest, but, we, but one of the richest at countries. Some point, at, some point you have to, at some point, you have to take the challenge and say, the this, challenge. Shit, this shit is unfair. I'm just telling you, I got a lot of people still stuck because they still talking about that shit. And I don't like it. I be telling them, like, life is unfair. There's a lot of shit that's unfair. Mm-hmm. We don't fault niggas to say they greedy woo-woo. We just get on our job and we do it. Part of the reason I have a clothing line is because I got sick of making the excuse of, why these designers ain't doing this? Why they not doing this? They need to make something that do this. Mm-hmm. If I had this, why would they do this? What? Why don't you do it, nigga? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm and that's what it becomes. So it's just like I don't. I never fought uh, white people. Like, I'd be mad that white people had that advantage and did that. But I don't. I don't get stuck and harped on it no more. The whole because because you were saying like I mean it's like just the, people, it's just the perspective of W E B yeah. Du Bois and Booker T Wash. One of them. <laughs> no, it is. One of them was like, "Hey, now that slavery is over, we want back pay." The other Real was tough. like, "Hey, what we need to do is mm-hmm. move on." Mm-hmm. And we're not gonna get anything from this. So that it is the but the I'm saying common this, either way, either way for now. That's that's a fast that's a fast forward to now. They it ain't nothing we could do. Like that would have had to be back then. But that's not true. Got, I mean, the reparations and different things have been paid out to so many different yeah. countries, and, and, yeah, and different they have also paid out reparations here. They could easily just not tax niggas for yeah. ten years they wanted to. They could do a lot of different things. So you can't say there's nothing we can do. People are choosing to not do anything. That's and, the I actually like that. I've never heard that. There's yeah. a whole bunch there's of different things. We're not, look, yeah, we're not trying. Tons more. I'm out. That's I, that's an amazing. Hey, you thought it out of your own, and that's a conversation that been floating. Just an idiot. No, you're not an idiot. I'm saying that's the most <laughs> simple. I'm, I'm saying that's the most simple real. and logical. It, somewhat, got somewhat. Of, they got, got that. I'm just saying, yeah, as, right. as far as yeah. taking a step forward and saying, yeah. "Bro, we giving y'all something yeah. that's worth it." Like taking advantage for ten years, y'all ain't got to pay no taxes. Run it up. That's see, that's really the conversation he's trying to. But I'm saying that's a beautiful. I, I just I wanted to know has he ever talked about that or he just winged I've said that it on the right? podcast before. Okay, that's I've what I wanted to know. I'm just saying that's a it sparks that sparks a beautiful conversation for me. That's all I'm saying. So even when you said it earlier, I think that is like oh you ain't doing nothing about it. I I agree with that fifty fifty right. So I was like yeah because people sometimes do make things happen with mm-hmm. nothing, and you're speaking for those people saying you ain't doing nothing about it. But then there are also times. Well, people can't make things happen because mm-hmm. certain systems and different things have been set up to make sure that you actually are not can't allowed win. to make yeah. that happen. Right. So, that? like, for those people... Well, I'm it, telling you now, if I invented a game, I'm not going to make it to where you could beat me. Yeah. 
I'll never ever <laughs> introduce you to a game that's where you're problem. supposed to beat me. That's well, the that's, issue. Yeah, I was gonna what? say you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's the issue. That's yeah. a game. No, no, it's, man. It's, it's look, yeah. man will never move from competition. Yeah. If it, it's a game, only is a game if everybody know you playing, or just if, <laughs> if, if you that's what I was person to know you playing. I was just All about right, to say, you know now <laughs> the game. No, Imagine. I didn't know. I didn't know before. It was unfair to me. I complained. And then I was like, oh, this is the game. I want to play. Right, but you also figured it out. What Let's about play. motherfuckers who don't figure it out? I'm telling them in the camera right now, it's a game. It's unfair. We still want to play, and we still want to win. Do we want to win? I don't know what we necessarily want to play. <laughs> <laughs> right. The playing you know, part gets You don't have to around. play. You living it, brother. You don't have to play around. You living it, brother. How important is it to tell your own story? I think it's uber important i think it's one of the most important things we can do is to try to tell our own story i think that if you don't tell it somebody will mm -hmm. so you would rather come from you and just be what it is and be your truth than to let somebody else tell your story or be like this is a better version of you i was talking about <laughs> with my friend about this actually yesterday how we're all in this time like because of um you know COVID and, 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 and everything that came within that everybody is realizing that life is sh very short mm -hmm. and that we don't really have time to really waste. We got to live our lives, whatever that may be, mean to that person. Uh, I think that we're all in this weird time where we're all kind of trying to rebrand ourselves to be actually us. Mm -hmm. Like for many years, we've all been trying to like give whatever is got you in a door or made somebody comfortable or made this person move this way or look at you this way. And now we're all like, yo, as time is kind of sped up mm -hmm. through us seeing all this crazy shit going on around us, it's made us be like, you know what? Let me be me. And let me, you know, be around people who actually accept me for who I am. So I think it's so super important to tell your own story. And that's what I'm trying to do with that unless. That's the reason I even dove into music was to be like, hey, it's not even necessarily this is, this is me. I think that humans are layered. We're complex. So this is just another version of me. This is just one more thing added on top of me. And I think it's so important to just be like, yo, do what you want to do. Tell your story and do it the way you want to do that shit. Uh, you would you think that's part of like that's empowerment, nice. like that and like entertainment, nice. and you know, like just having people being able to speak out, you know, and not have to worry about so much backlash or really worry about if people are gonna, you know, not agree with you. It just depends on what level you're doing it. Like, you know, what I'm saying, like, there's a responsibility that that comes the bigger you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like, yeah, you can do it early on and be like, I'm living for me. <laughs> And I'm doing only this shit for me. And you do a whole podcast called me. And it's just the shit you like. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Stilo and Stilo got the same shit going on. They both said that. <laughs> Tell me about so this shit gonna be about me. He said that? I swear ah, to the Lord. Shit. Back in the day, dog, you know, we and like seeing people, black dudes in like these large groups. I'll never forget being around kids that that would make them so nervous. And I always wonder why. Like, I always felt like if they have the weed and the drinks and all the stuff that they want, yeah. why would they bother me now? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'd be mad if they don't have nothing. Well, because like, they're, I'm scared. They don't like, know what weed does. Yeah. They're like, like, man, he hit that joint, he might kill us. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It's like the last thing somebody is supposed to think like, about. Bro, they got everything. They're trying they to need. solve the world. They, 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 they <laughs> find <there>. peace. <laughs> right. But to a kid, oh, to a nah, kid, it might as well be crack. Yeah. If anything is crack. Yeah. You're a crackhead for anything. Yeah. If it's, it could be like, oh, yeah, he smoke weed, he a crackhead. <laughs> yeah, you got to assess the room, though, man. You got to know that. And it, catching the vibe of somebody with insecurities projecting it onto you is it usually a conversation of they just start. Rolling out, cause my I would say the only way I could project insecurities with people that I've been around people that they get around me and start throwing so much stuff that they have going on that I've never seen that yeah. it just be like, bro, what? Like, why? Yeah. I'll be like, why are you saying all this? But it's like I guess he feel like to be around me and have this conversation. Cause he saw me do one new thing on yeah. Dancing with the Stars. Now it's like now you want to have this weird conversation or a dick swinging contest that I ain't got time for. Like, yeah, I think that's... that's uh, Is that the most common? That's just be, I don't want to say Hollywood. Uh, like you can the, say that. The industry, the industry, and then that also 
sometimes, like, like you said, it's just it's projecting fears. Mm. It's people who who would love to do the things you're doing, who would love to do the things we're doing, and be like, all right, I I think I could do it, but they just not. They don't believe in themselves. They don't have the 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 lack of fear or not realizing that we all still got fear. And that it's just the difference is confidence. You know what I'm saying? Being like, I'm gonna go out this thing. For me, when I knew doing this whole music project that I was gonna have a whole bunch of people who looked at me and was like, "What is this nigga doing? Right. Oh, this nigga's having a midlife crisis right in front What's of up? us." Um, I was gonna joke and call the project. Nobody asked for this. Uh, just because nobody asked for it. Uh, <laughs> but that's fire. And, and, yeah, just like you. <laughs> and I was like, yo, just because of me doing this, I was like, yeah, I want to be a vessel for other motherfuckers if nothing else to be look at me and be like, man, bro, really is living okay, is is doing well in life, and did this, <laughs> and is still just want to try new things mm -hmm. and not being afraid of it. I knew a whole bunch of people was gonna look at me, but like, he looks crazy, mm -hmm. or did it, but. Actually, I think more people came out and was like, yo, number one, I didn't believe it when I first saw it. Then I saw it and was like, oh, this is real. Then from there, was like, oh, this is actually not bad. Oh, then from there, was like, oh, actually, it's kind of dope. Vibe. Then like, oh, man, he actually shot, I, I directed all my own videos. Mm -hmm. So it's actually like, oh, he shot all these things pretty clean, pretty this. And people were like, man, I ain't even like, man, more and more listening to the project. You actually got some stuff going. What you got next? Now I knew this was just an opening for me to, to, to create something more. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's like, like with, with you just starting to dabble in it, bro, like, you're going to get better and better. I'm already finding myself being man, like, man. you're going to start getting so good at that shit. You're yeah. going to be like, damn, was I a rapper the whole time? It's well, that, fun. As long as it's fun when you're doing it. Super fun. Super fun. I went through this thing with music, and, and you can interject. What I realized in my music and why I'm so excited to release my album now, I at one point thought music was me flexing my my ability to rap. Mm -hmm. Like y'all was gonna be like, I'ma listen to him cause his skill is just better than this nigga. Yeah. And kids don't care about the competition anymore. No. They just want the song to resonate with whatever story. 100%. Music is made to make people connect, which is the simplest form of communication, correct? So all my music now is geared toward what about me is relatable to y'all that y'all just don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's damn near the podcast type shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But it's like, I feel like that's been the key. What has been your thing that you're seeing that music does that you like this fucking stand? Like to me, that was the biggest standout. Like, damn, I can't believe this whole time I've been sitting here trying to use big words. Like I'm doing the T.I. shit in a yeah. verse. Yeah. I'm trying to stay above the clouds and create a line that's so difficult to understand that you got to read it. And yeah. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing that for? Like, yeah. I, I don't even like, I was just saying this earlier, like some of my raps, I, I still be learning and working on like, oh, how can I put better emphasis on this without it coming across hor corny and you like having to stop the whole beat and do this, how can you do this better? And like my, my style, it'll be more, it's more smooth for sure. It's more like, it's creating a tone mm -hmm. more than anything, or like, hey, I want to create a vibe or a mm -hmm. setting or a, a color palette or a mood versus like, hey, let me approach this now. I'm getting more into the space of like, let me go in this and truly write from a place mm -hmm. to see where I can land. I still think I do go in with like this A and R perspective that's still like, I right, well, how are we gonna craft this? Yeah. to make this make sense versus this. Like, I'll work with people who I, I deem way more talented than me, but they don't know how to, like, necessarily put something together. Structure it. Yeah, I'm like, man, you can really rap. Mm -hmm. But, like, <laughs> it no kind of stops there. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, you should <laughs> Like practice. the battle rap nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're like, like, man, that's crazy. That was really good. Now you I could just make me want to listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, like, if anything, <laughs> I've approached it and been like, all right, I want to – get you to want to listen to it. So a uh, beat selection was super big for me in going into it and being like, I want to work with producers I even knew for the past and mm -hmm. some of the homies or just people that I've been fans of. And that's, I'm going to probably end up doing another project with, with some people. And uh, they all right now, the producers I want to do, like these four producers, I'm all f big fans of all of them. So I think I could like really craft something really dope. Yeah. With these, like two of the two, probably from each of them. That's always the best when you could get everybody involved to feel like, cause it's it's one thing to sit down and pick beats, mm 
Yeah. And be like, oh, I'm going to take this beat and this beat. But it's another thing for all the producers to know the sound you're going for. Yep. Everybody be in the same room and then they make you 10 cohesive beats. Well, yep. not cohesive, but just the puzzle pieces fit. Didn't do one session. I mean, I did one session actually with Justice League on this project. Other than that, just. Wait, you had, sat down with the Justice League? Yeah. Or Justice League is one person? No, it's three of them. Oh, okay. They're, yeah, we, we, we did uh, like four days in a row. You know the Justice League? Yeah. Bro, you know, I be knowing everybody. You know, it's, it's the ones that did Ross yeah. and Airbag Music. Yeah, they, did. they came to your house. They did four of my projects. At your house? They did one at my house, one at Jamie's house, and then two at a. Did American. you just casually name Jamie Foxx? I didn't say Jamie Foxx. Oh, who's Jamie? Jamie? Foxx, yeah. Who was I it? didn't know. I said Jamie, and then he said Fox. And I was That's like, since we just completed it and make it Jamie Foxx. Just Fox. casually yeah. dropped Jamie Foxx's Bro, name. Bro, I bet you know. Cause it's not Jamie Foxx no more. It's Jamie. Yeah. Oh, you y'all on first name basis. Mm -hmm. I forgot. Me and Fox. Say his last name real quick. Come on, Fox. I hate him. <laughs> Two X. Two X. Yeah, I hate this guy, man. No, nah, bro, you know I've been on. I've been on TV Willie for 11 Beeman, years, like, and then before that, you know, I'd be, you know, I'd be cool saying, people, though, You bro. can't casually just name Willie Beeman. He did it. Man. I can. He did it. Because I don't be like, I'm not the person that you're going to ever go on my Instagram and be like, oh, he got pictures with celebrities. Oh, no, that's bro. corny. If that's, you was like that, I would unfollow you. Yeah, like, as you should. Yeah, yeah and, I don't uh, let you be lame. No, nah, I, 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 I don't should. even, I ain't even got it in me, Yeah. Though. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you watching that for me, but I ain't even got it in me. <laughs> but like, so for me, it's like, I feel uncomfortable being... If I would have said Jamie Foxx, it would have been worse. Yeah, but so I, that's why I just wanted to let you... Like, I just wanted to get yeah. the, the, I know the viewers. He I wanted the viewers to understand. What he's saying is he didn't do it for us. He did that so he could feel better. Yeah, that was really... Copy. Was, like, you really did want to be called out on that. But I'm nah. on yeah. this show here... Yeah. I appreciate that. Hey, man. <laughs> when you casually <laughs> name yeah, that... He knows where he stands. I ain't going to lie, though. Justice League, I could rap. No, he can really. No, y'all would actually do some good shit together. Too. Nah, right. No, for real. Like I, I got like, like four hundred of their beats, bro, at the crib right now. That's what I'm saying. But I need to know how much dollars. It, now y'all can talk about type that. Of shit. You can't monetize it before. Y'all can talk about that though. Yeah. No, 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 no. no, no. I'm, I'm saying like to you know people make you pay for time. Man. One thousand percent. And I and I believe. You know what I'm saying, saying now if he too. got that relationship with them where they just ready to go in with me, cool. That's one thing. But I'm saying initially for time. Motherfucker, sit down with you, plan some shit out, we'll wop the band. I already know how it go. No, they ain't trying to charge you for no time, bro. All right, cool. That's perfect. That, nah, I think you said it, Shuddy. Right? The Neptune. They ain't trying to charge nah, you for no time. Joking. I was just joking. Yeah. I made that up so that and you could say nice. that and then, I could say, and then I could say, Stilo said this was free. So I, I, said, I definitely said. didn't say that either. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about stepping out of the box. What yeah, what make you want to try new stuff? What makes me? Um, yeah, like, like doing the podcast, doing... Music now. What is making you step out of the box? Why not just stay? Because I mean, rewind. I, I always was like, you know, had other plans of doing other things. After I like, I got on the show. I was like, all right, I'm here. So let me, you know, what I'm saying, I have other ideas and other things. I write television and, and different things. I did, and do my production deal with Paramount Plus recently. Right. So for me, it's like I, I've always been a creative. Um, just have always been my toughest critic where I'm like I hate on myself in a, in a heartbeat of like I, you know, they gonna, uh, I always don't tell myself why somebody's not gonna like it and that allows me to be aware I think somewhat of like demographic what I'm trying to like really you know achieve mm -hmm. and what success looks like but in the same breath for many years I was just like kind of shooting down my own dreams of like man like and I was just like yo dude it's got to come a point where you just push it out. Like, right. you can't keep making the excuse for yourself of like, oh, well, I ain't doing the podcast because, oh, the cameras ain't, we ain't got the right cameras yet. And then the microphones, this one ain't, maybe next week. It's like, it's always a maybe next week. It's always like, no, nah, you can't keep procrastinating what that is. So with me putting out the podcast, that was the first step mm -hmm. of me being like, there's something from the ground up that you just are asking people to to check out. You know, you got to use your resources, use what you can around to see if they do so. But, like, this is from the ground up. This could or could not work. That happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So, for me, after got over that hump, it just was like, yo, you know what the fuck you see in your head. It's like when you, that person that gets up on stage and, you know, they get their award. They're like, I saw this when I was 13 mm -hmm. years old. <laughs> and, like, no, that person really saw that shit when they was 13 mm -hmm. years old. That person really, 
you know, manifested that nonstop and been like, yo, this is what's going to happen. And people will call you crazy, but the crazy people change the world. So for me, on a smaller scale, I'm like, yo, what is it for me to put out music? Mm -hmm. What is it for me to put out a podcast? Motherfuckers don't watch it or listen to it. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's not, another one. <laughs> yeah, and also that doesn't define me. Like, uh, like that don't. If you don't listen to it, cool. Damn. At least I did that shit, and right. I wanted to do that shit. And it gives you analytics to go off of. One hundred percent. Give you facts. Yeah. Now 100%. I have facts. I either can or I can't do this. Yeah. Um, it's cool hearing you say that. When I think of stepping out of the box, I just I always think back to my mother saying like, "You just like." She'd be like, you more than a basketball player. Mm -hmm. But I remember her having a conversation with like other moms and my aunties and other people. And people would be like, you know that boy going to the NBA or whatever. And she was constantly throw out there like, he gonna, he could do a bunch of other stuff. Like, mm -hmm. just a, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she used to just be telling me like, sometimes I'll take a game too hard where I'll just, and she'd be like, there's so much other stuff you could do, Iman. Like, you don't have to go out at 6 a.m. tomorrow to play basketball and frustrate yourself even more. She's like, just chill for a day. Like, yeah. do something else. Like, so many other things you like to do and you keep burying them for ball. And um, when I finally didn't have a contract, I was like, man, gee, I just want to try some shit. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, it's not like I'm going to stop hooping. Like, I love hooping because I love hooping. Mm -hmm. Nobody had to tell me. Y'all ain't never had to tell me to be in shape. Y'all didn't tell me to be in shape for the first tryout. Nigga, I was playing every day. Mm -hmm. I showed up and bust y'all ass. Y'all said, I want him. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I didn't, it wasn't no, <clears throat> y'all had to encourage me to do it. So I yeah. took it as I'm going to step out and do all these other things because I hoop on my own. Yeah. Like, I hoop because I love to hoop. Like, I was take it as you stepping out of the box and doing music and podcasts, but you're like, bro, I don't even have to stop doing ridiculous things. Like, yeah. why the fuck would I stop? Like, still do it and still try this and still try that. Because like, you get to know yourself more through all those things as well. Like, like, like you said, it's like basketball can become so much, so time consuming and you feel like, damn, this taking a whole bunch from me that like you get a, a moment to breathe. You're like, man, it's so much more to you mind. It's so many more layers that I got to really... Uh, unwrap yeah, yeah, uncover and be like, oh man, like I'm learning myself. Like there's nothing else throughout this pandemic, throughout these last couple of years. I think it was a time for people to learn themselves mm -hmm. and really sit with themselves mm -hmm. and get to know themselves. So like, uh, my my therapist had challenged me to be like, go complete something you always want to complete. And it wasn't even that. It wasn't even that like, and oh. It's a trending topic on this show. CeeLo Green. If you're now tuning no, in, everybody who's been on Iman here. amongst men. Every guest on Iman Amongst Men so far has a therapist. Has a therapist. That's great. That's great. That's amazing. I love to hear that. We're the only ones who don't. Oh, yeah. word. That's why we still got problems. Oh, okay. That's yeah. why you still got problems. We. Okay. We. Speak for yourself. Yeah, we. Not I do, but yeah. 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 Denial, huh? Yeah. There you go. That's, 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 that's the first part. That's good for you to know that. Yeah. That's what? <laughs> You're in denial. Who is in denial? <laughs> you are. You thought it was in my already whole time? I've been to, I've been to counseling. Counseling? They ain't calling something different already. <laughs> he made up his own. You was someone different already. <laughs> no, I went to a counselor. I've been, to, I've been to strategic thinking, man. Come on, man. Come on, uh, I, <laughs> I did meditation groups. <laughs> right, he went to yoga. Talk to myself. He was like, I'm all right. Look at you talking about. How they work? Close. <laughs> <laughs> it probably was amazing. I'm cool, dog. To tell you the truth, man. Oh, I you did like once. I haven't been aggressive for a while. You one of the people that do it like once and be like, "We did it." <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I, I, I went dolo. <laughs> we figured it out, didn't we? Nah, I went we did that today. I went dolo. <laughs> yeah, I know. What I'm saying, but how long? Twice. Twice you got you figured out the full yeah. you somehow figured out that's all your shit in two seconds. No, that's I why I'm laughing. I didn't figure it out. I started the work that was presented on the table because I'm like, not gonna ah. pay to do the like, work ah. with you every week. The niggas get you uh, homework. Listen, and you just, I'm big on how long you been. I'm big on taking the challenge for myself. Yeah, if I feel like I'm only gonna do it because you're around, this is fake. So I've never understood therapy. Yeah, that's not. If you can give me a plan. Is. You can give me a plan, mm -hmm. right? And say, yo, this is what we're supposed to do, right? Mm -hmm. this, you should challenge yourself to do this. Yeah. If I wholeheartedly believe in that plan, I accept that plan. Yeah. And I follow it. Yeah. 
if I need you every day, it's because I haven't accepted it. I'm just doing it so I can stop talking to you. Yeah, and if that's how you feel. Yeah, um, but that's not necessarily. That. Yeah. yeah. Why I you don't agree. don't agree? I don't. Because. Break it down, brother. Because everybody loves this therapy. But everybody's not wired. I like, just gave a mental therapist once. <laughs> <laughs> so you went one of this deal. Y'all think y'all gonna get me to go, huh? I just got here. Just yeah. get, just but you say you've been talking to one, so you only talked to him once and you bring it up to no, me. No, no, no. It's no. a woman. It's a black woman, and I've, I've talked to her a whole bunch of times. Why I disagree is because everybody's not wired like you are. Yes. So some people don't, like, everybody doesn't need the same thing. That's why therapists are. You can change your wires. Dem- huh? You can change the wires. Just like you can. But you can do the same thing. Who? You. You can. You change telling. Change wires. Well, I'm just, saying, I'm just saying, like, for me, the therapist is more about talking uh, things out. And if nothing else, it's a lot of self-help, yeah. a lot of self-work. So, like, as yeah. you're talking these things out, number one, it's good to not have to go to somebody that's not your family mm-hmm. or a friend. That they you don't can have really any bias. Be like, I be, yeah, yeah no bias, bias here. They don't know you. just be like open, an open book with this person. Secondly, is you reading your own book somewhat. Mm-hmm. So, as you're, like, going through your book, you're kind of getting to know yourself. You're going to end up solving. You know you better than anybody. You're going to end up solving a whole bunch of the things on your own as you're talking these things out anyway. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You're going to end up going through different things and realizing why you may do this thing this way, what you may still be mourning about, what you didn't actually properly grieve about, what this thing, what this defense mechanism looks like, because strong Iman don't cry, do this. I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't cry, do this or that. And that all that kind of stuff is just you getting to know yourself more. It's just you being like, all right. Why would you say strong Iman? So yeah, no, I'm saying, I'm saying no, 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 no. Don't run from <laughs> Is there a strong Stilo? <laughs> of course, oh, there's a strong yeah. Stilo. <laughs> of course, of course. So but there's like also, a strong one, also, a weak one, a tall one. It's a, a whole bunch. It's layers. It's for sure layers. A whole bunch of Stilo. I just noticed, like, what made him say skinny Stilo, <laughs> fat Stilo? No, I'm just, I'm just more saying for you. If you like, yo, I don't cry about shit. That may be yeah, a, something no. that you blocking that's from tough, yourself. That's tough, Stilo. Yeah. This, yeah, that's crying yeah. Stilo. But that's the thing. No, tough Stilo might not be good for him at a certain point. So the therapist can kind of teach you how to tuck away tough Stilo. That's what I'm saying. Why are we that. tucking dude away? Because like, sometimes, you tell nobody it's, away? sometimes it's not right. Because sometimes it's not right. I've never put strong chump in the back but room. I'm not saying even put in like a that. back room as much as I'm saying release from a back room as well. Oh, like, how many times do I let him out? Now I don't no, let him no, out to yeah, do nothing. How many? Yeah, I don't let him do whatever he want to do. He a little different. See? Yeah, yeah. ever since that's the yeah, point. Ever since the know. newspapers, he. But can't. also for you to be like, I mean, I said strong shot or strong Ema. I was joking, but like, no, you wasn't. But the correlation I'm making, Matt. Remember when he was like, "Yo, uh, my therapist was like me. Like he's half." Uh, he said he's half black, half Italian like him. Yeah, yeah. Grew right, up in right, a similar right. household, all that. Yada, yada, yada. She's not Real. like him. He's that, but that's dude, the, she's the, a girl. Listen, let me finish. That's the point I'm making. Two two different people. I like, both of them like me. Yeah, but, but he's, he's <laughs> I'm just saying, he's one nigga. There's another nigga. Both of them need different things from different people. So that's why therapy. They, they got to be niggas. <laughs> <laughs> no, they niggas. Cause they niggas. Like that's they no, don't. Real, they not real. like I everybody else. Like, so it's like, like you know the struggle. You you know you comfortable and you can talk with somebody who's not you know super like he said personable. So it's not your family. It's not somebody who's gonna be like oh well you know I knew him. I'd have known him or I could see good things in him and I just want him to do real well. And it's like we don't need all of that. Yeah, maybe I just went to therapy for the wrong th- for the wrong reasons. Hey, it ain't that though. Like uh, you went a, solo, right? You said yeah. Okay. And it's just more like. I don't know, like, though it helped me deal with a lot of, like, pain from the past that I didn't really realize I had, uh, I was like, yeah, that'll be all. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Was it too challenging in that? Not too challenging, just it it's disrupting my forward progress. Like, I got shit to do, and it, I'm in here for four hours, and now for the rest of oh, this. I don't know about four hours is needed. Also, uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, like, nigga, I only went twice. Oh, so you told him get it all in. No, I just I didn't. I went to two-hour sessions. Like, no, I just. Two hours, you just had two two-hour sessions? Yeah. Oh, like, okay. I'm okay. saying, oh, like. Okay. <laughs> Let's get it. Any more questions? Any more questions? I sat down eight hours. You no, thought no, that no, nigga no, did no, a therapy no, marathon. No. I'm saying, like. I mean, <laughs> like, we going to get all this shit out tonight. Did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers exhausted. No, I'm just saying, I didn't know. Like, we did that, the breathing exercises and all that. Like, I ain't never got that upset. You see what I'm saying? So. The shit that I learned about myself that I buried, I didn't even know your mind was a, like buried shit. But I have 
little moments that I probably done bury some more shit that I'm cool on, my nigga. <laughs> like I put it, yeah. I put that shit away for a reason, and I don't got time to be digging it up and it resurfaced. Now that I'm 30, I don't know how I'll process it. I don't know. I think that's where almost the trust for yourself to process it in Maybe a more when I'm mature. 45. Yeah, and, and that's fair. That's, that's cool. That's knowing you. Yeah, I, I just think I'm that cool. uh, being open to having those <laughs> <laughs> conversations and shit is important. Just because you end up do like you know what I'm saying. Like what will end up being is just hurt men that pass down hurt. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And hurt people hurt people. And not even a, a way that you're trying to hurt anybody. That's really what I'm seeing now. Like, I'm glad you said that. Like, especially, like, as we get older, that's what I'm really noticing. Like, especially with us, like, black men. Like, we constantly pass down hurt. Like, me included. Yeah, Every, me included. Like, nobody's, you know, really, you know, unbiased of this. Like, we all do it, but we do it so subconsciously that it kind of resonates too quickly. So it's like if you don't know, it kind of becomes the curse because you're passing it on to your kids and they're not going to know. They're probably not going to know earlier than you. That's what's scary to me. And, you know, then you got shorties watching shorties. They see other kids or you go, they, they go to school and they pass this on. It's like you don't really know who's getting a hold of this well, information they, or what they can handle. They used to have to live with this somewhat. Like even like, mm-hmm. you know, black men in general, my dad, I, 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 I talk to him on the phone. and I, talk, I joke about it. I be serious, too. Cause I get in the convo with him, and like you get, you know, it kind of makes me happy. I'm on the phone, with my dad. And I can just tell that my dad is just starting to like live as a like a person. We know the film. as a as a black man. You like, yo, you've been so wound up, defensive. You've been so you have to be so strong. You've been have to be a man's man and do this stuff and do this stuff and that you ain't never even lift yourself. I ain't never seen him cry until my grandma passed away. Uh, I was twelve, the first time ever funeral, and I was yeah. like, whoa, shit, I ain't no dude could cry. What's up? I ain't know that was a possibility, fam. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the same so, way with my dad. So it's like for me, I just be like, there's so many things I know my dad could have went to therapy for. So many hurts, and and him trying his best, him just being like, this is this is me doing my best. Right. And a lot of those things were amazing. And then the other things, I'm like, I got this from him. I got this generational curse from him. I gotta break this. I gotta break this from my mama. I gotta get this shit out of my system because this shit is fucked up. And like those are things that like. You may be asking yourself, well, how are we getting there? Well, somebody passing it down ain't enough. That's a cop out. You being like, oh, I get that. You know how that motherfucker's there. Mm-hmm. He get that from his daddy. Oh, well, he just that way. What you going to do about it? Uh, tell this nigga to stop? Right. <laughs> right. Right. Like, Give go work context. on yourself a little bit. Yeah, just like if nothing else challenge them to be better because we all, my dad lives forever, and that's through me. And then, you know, I live forever, and so on and so forth. I, it's nothing else. It's my job to pass on or to break whatever it is so I can pass on whatever healthy shit I can to my kid. And it's whatever you seem, whatever you deem is healthy. Yeah, and that, and that's gonna always be. That's where you gotta go, man. That's where it comes into picking your therapist. Well, I wanted a black woman for sure. That was one of the things that I was like intentional about getting. Like, yeah. I I dealt with other counselors or <laughs> therapists in the past. You uh, know, it was tough convo sometimes when you can't honestly be yourself when you can't tell them some, some next shit from time to time yeah. and be like, hey, this. It's the thing. Hey, this thing. What does that look like in a therapist? Like, how can you tell, like, all right, they, they with the shits? I don't even know how I got there eventually, but <laughs> it probably was me opening up one of the time, more times, like, one of the first times I opened up mm. uh, to her and felt like I'm going to give you a real me. Because it's all about intent as well. When I used to go to counseling before, I used to go in and be like, I'm smarter than these motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. Watch this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play it this way. And ride them off. Oh, what? And I would really control the room. And I'd be like, I just yeah. write them off, but now you <laughs> taking you the goddamn. Fam, I was a piece of shit boyfriend. <laughs> one of my exes, horrible. And uh, we went to counseling for whatever reason. The relationship was over with. We went to counseling for whatever reason. This is not. And, and I was there just trying to make the counselor <laughs> think I was amazing. If nothing else, I, was, I went in. I was like, Yo, I'm gonna paint the best nigga they've ever seen in life. If they think of black Jesus, this is what the painting is going to end with. You're going to see the best black man you've ever seen. And I, we got there and the counselor was like, basically, basically I'm saying, oh, if I had someone in my life like him you know, at, at 26, I would be so much farther ahead. And I'm like, well, this isn't about me, counselor. This is about us getting to somewhere, you know, together. And like, oh, he played him. Wait, wait, and he it, played and all it took, all it took was one day I overslept. I took a nap and overslept, missed the counseling session. 
<laughs> he hated left, you. Left my ex with her alone for a session. She came back. I was not who. <laughs> I, I, I came back in to betrayal. She looked at me like, mm. <laughs> You're not who I thought you were. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, fuck, one day alone and it's over with for me. Real but tough. that also was me going in and trying to paint somebody. Right. So, like, you're only going to get out of anything in life. You're only going to get out of what you put in. Mm. So, if you're going in and you're not putting in a real version of yourself, if you're going in and being like, oh, no, really, I just want this person to tell me this thing or us talk about this little one little thing over here because it's the only thing I want to. Touch on, it's like, all right, well, you only gonna get a little out of it because you only wanna go over a little. So it's just whatever you put in. We always ask this, man. It's our burning question. Yes, sir. CeeLo, what is it? What's one thing you're working on improving on yourself right now, presently? Just, uh, you know, realizing my energy is my energy. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just presently, always trying to assess moments before I uh, reacting. Like you know self awareness thing. Yeah, well, me, I just feel like I can react to energy and thing, and, and a lot of it is me trying to not allow my energy to be to get blackened or blurred or whatever it is. But I think I probably react too too quickly, and that's one thing that I try to work on myself and being like, hey, take a breath. Hey, think about this. Hey, think about why this person may have did this. Hey, and, and those are things that I think I, I got from therapy of being like, I'm I I no, I wanted to. Take you back there full circle. <laughs> no, no, no. Now you think I'm trying to push the therapy on you. No, I just think that it's been a common theme that everybody, yeah. they they drop therapy as it's one of these real. things. Yeah, we ask real. this question and they circle back to the therapy. Yeah. Thing. yeah. Like it's, it's a good thing. No, yeah, well, I think, yeah, I think we're, it was we're talking organic. about black yeah, men nah, going to therapy. Thing. No, it's black okay. men going to therapy is great. That's yeah, a good thing. that's great. For so long, we didn't even know we could do it. We thought we weren't supposed to be doing it. We thought it made us soft. We thought all types of We all need to go. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that. I think that if nothing else, the trauma that America and the different things, just living in, and like, don't think that your problem's too small. Like, because that's what a lot of people do. They'll be like, oh, well, my issue is only this thing and this thing, so I need to go to therapy. That's how I used to feel. And, like, it's like, no, those are the you things that saying, you, you can identify. Me, bro. I, I could be your therapist. That is oh, the no, last no, no. person I want to be a therapist. <laughs> I want better for you, Ari. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> hey, nigga. <laughs> That's it. Do you hey, want to win the it. game? That's it. Wait, wait what? Or I, sit on the bench. I was talking to you about some other <laughs> shit. So you don't want to win the game. That's up to you. Hangs up. You're like, I guess that was a session. <laughs> My friend is still dead, but <laughs> yeah, I'm going to win. Nigga. <laughs> I guess I'm going to win. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna start it. He, he gonna start it. <laughs> he thought about Why it. Why don't you want to do that? <laughs> he thought about <laughs> That's on there? Yes. Yes. They knew. <laughs> so, Stilo, every uh, show we like to tap in with our fans over on social media, give them a chance, give them a voice. Uh, that time to ask that burning question that artists usually either go around what they're trying to say and go PC. Oh, yeah. But instead of letting them go around that politically correct route, we like to answer them straight. Ari, what's the question today? Uh, today's question comes from at Martyrran7 on IG. She writes, all right, all right, all right, homie, when are you going to rock the mic in Chicago? I think that initially um, we'll just be hitting main cities. So it'll probably be like a Chicago, New York, L.A., Somewhere in Texas, uh, Houston and Dallas. Somewhere. Imagine finding out that you're not a main Miami. city. Miami. Huh? I'm saying the main city. There's going to be a Come Mobile. Yeah. Mobile. <laughs> mobile waiting. The chicken like circuit. Like it's a snow day. Looking it's not that dog. I'm saying that's how we're going to birth the tour. Like I, I would hope that in those cities, because I've played in those cities, because I've been exposed to a bigger market, being in New York mm-hmm. with the Knicks, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to try and lean on those cities that know me uh, to first get the first couple of shows off, especially Chicago, doing a show there where people know me for rapping and yeah. they don't have to just say, this is a basketball player taking it off his jersey. Like, people in Chicago are like, no, this nigga been rapping the whole time. Like, yeah. we've we been fucking with dude. Like, so to do a concert there uh, and have footage to show people to where now I could promote a tour, I think that's where Amazing. the plan is coming in. So I don't have a date for you yet, Mama, but I am dropping my album this summer. I am going to tour it. Uh, I actually been talking to uh, Daniela 
and Posh. Um, yeah, ever since doing the tour with Dancing with the Stars, man, I might try and bring along some of my Dancing with the Stars friends if I go on tour. Really gonna try and that's make dope. it. Yeah, try and make effort. it a thing. Yeah, that's dope. Just, just something cool, man. I know Dancing with the Stars going to Disney. A lot of things is changing and shit. If I go on tour though, man, I want it to be exciting. I want it to be different. So, yeah, great question, man. You know what I'm saying? Give me a chance to throw my drop out there, man. I'm definitely yeah, dropping yeah. the album, man. I'm definitely taking it on tour. So I'll take the mic, sweetheart. I think I'm done with. Taking the mic with Dancing with the Stars, unless Disney got my phone number, we could talk about that. <laughs> uh, Stilo, you got anything yeah. uh, planned? Is there a tour plan any after releasing the music? Any release? Oh uh, yeah, any performances and shit we could come to? No tour right now. Heckle you from the crowd? No performances right now. Uh, I'm planning on doing some shows though. Yeah. Doing some uh, festivals, popping in on a couple of festivals. We might be at the same festival. I might take on a couple of festivals. Man, that's what I'm saying. I'm pop in. I think that I probably don't want to do as many shows to start off. I want to grow the music a little more. Yeah. But I'm going to um, definitely try to pop in some festivals and see if people fuck with me. Yeah. I always wanted that moment. Like, I, I watched a video the other day of, like, T.I. getting booed. <laughs> yeah. Up. I saw it too. I love that moment. Yeah. I don't like know. I, not bo getting booed. The moment that you go out on and you don't know, like you just don't know, like there's this fight or flight, all thing, that, that no, survival like that instinct. He could still fail. Like, yeah, like you know. I could fail, or <laughs> this could go really good. Like yeah. I could, I, I could think that I'm finna fail, and then what I say, they cry laughing so hard. Like yeah. he he said that he done had shows where that that same joke he was running. Killed the crowd, like mm -hmm. everybody laughing. Put that footage up. I don't know where it's footage. You should have showed that. I'm just yeah, saying. Showed that. I'm just saying. I, as a basketball I'm player, joking, joking. I done shot the last shot in that bitch airball. Yeah. And I done shot the last shot and that went in. But you got a video. But I'm both. in love with. <laughs> you got a video of both. We know I definitely both got. Happen. I definitely got footage of it. Yeah. But what know. I'm saying is. I love getting to that moment where you don't know. <laughs> Try something new, and the threat of what's what could go wrong. That threat is as good as the benefits of what happened when everything go right. Like I love I, that moment that they weigh out the same. Yeah. Shit. No, I mean I'm excited to even get on the stage because I feel like I know I'm gonna put on a good performance. Yeah, I know I'm gonna actually put on a good set. I've been in music for so long. I'm like, oh, I would go on so many shows and be like. This is it probably sucks. a delusional problem. No, not it sucks, but you watch a show. I watch TV. I watch film. I watch actual music. Mm -hmm. It'd be like, I would do this like this. I would do that over there. Oh, right, right, right. Lights over here like this. The problem is you ain't got enough records and you're not playing with mm -hmm. the actual records of the city and and meshing them and making this person just leaning into it. So like, I, I just know that I'm super geeked on like really putting planning and putting show. that together and being like, I right, well, if I know if I'm doing a show, I can win people over also with performing. Hey man, if y'all didn't know, Stilo Brim, he an artist now, <laughs> actor, comedian. You need him to come rewind, fast yeah. forward, uh, edit your shit, man, yeah. or something. You know, you don't want to run in the strong Stilo though. Yeah, you don't know how strong Stilo go act unless I don't he's even had know. unless he had <laughs> wine and weed before. You don't know how you oh, go nice. act. You like how I flood that? Did. You like that? Was that? Nice. that was nice. I got a movie coming out this year. You know. Oh, what's that movie? I ain't even going. It's cool, man. Something they never knew. I mean, they, I, I mean, they be they be denouncing me all the time. I got a movie coming out with um, Gabrielle Union and Keith Powers and shit on Netflix. Yeah. You hear how casually he just. I said, be casual, casual, bro. Don't I got his look. That's what it's for. I'm not. I'm not for it, man. Don't do that. See, I said her full Shout name to make you Union. comfortable too. I uh, said Gabrielle Union. He did. Yeah, he, he did. did. You yeah. better put some that respect was, on it. As I should, yeah. but because my friends be like Gab. But then I was like, <laughs> that ain't the right call. Put two names in now. Yeah, yeah. that's great. <laughs> I got well. some shit in the works uh, with Dwayne, man. So. See, look at that. Yeah. We said you working nah, too. We them. said you acting through your shit. Oh, yeah, I got some little shit coming, man. A lot of shit for y'all TV, man. A lot of shit for y'all airways. A lot of good shit coming. People still be on the airways? Stilo Green. <laughs> oh, my bad. Stilo, Stilo Brown. Stilo Brown. It's Stilo Brown. Stilo Brown. Stilo Brown. Get my name right, man. <laughs> The disrespect. <laughs> Yo, man, I want to thank you for coming on the show, My man. Best, man. Thank you, bro. You know us. Just two kids from Opal, My man. My guys. Stilo Brown, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>